Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Construction Record Podcast. I'm digital mediator Warren Fry, and with me again, I have Bill Ferreira. Uh, and Bill is here from Bill Forest Canada because uh, they've just released, uh, as of recording, they haven't, but as of the time you hear this, they will have released a, a whole bunch of studies uh, of looking at the the labor situation across Canada. So let's start with that sort of holistically with uh, the nation as a whole. Uh, how how are things looking for Canada proper? Well, pretty good. Uh, the situation is certainly improving. Uh, we have been seeing a, a slight increase in the number of new entrants coming into the industry in some provinces. Uh, but fairly looking forward, I mean, the demographics of the country are certainly going to recreate uh, ongoing challenges for the construction industry. And we uh, anticipate the industry will need to hire uh, an additional 300,000 workers between now and 2032. Mm-hmm. And, but growth is continuing. Like it contracted a tiny bit from 2022, but it's going back up past 2024 from what I gather. Absolutely. Growth is going to continue. The demands for construction labor are going to remain high. And uh, certainly we are not seeing any significant declines, although um, for the next couple of years we have seen a slight decline in residential demand, and that in part is because of uh, the rapid rise in interest rates we saw in 2022, mm-hmm. but we anticipate that will pick up uh, again by 2024. And uh, this study doesn't even, as you say in your news release, it doesn't even anticipate the fact that the government of Canada wants to build twice as many homes as we have now, and um, construction services are on the rise as well. That's not even in these numbers, I believe. Correct. We uh, we weren't able to factor into our analysis this year that doubling of uh, it's an aspirational target, but the uh, mm-hmm. the government and many provinces are looking to double the number of new homes built over the next 10 years. And the other thing that we are in the process of analyzing, and there will be an additional report that will come out in the early summer, is what the impact of electrification of the economy is going to mean uh, for the construction sector, particularly looking at which trades are going to be most directly impacted. And and speaking of electrification, um, Ontario and British Columbia, uh, Ontario, those are well, I guess Quebec as well. Are those are kind of the three biggies as far as electrification goes? But they're also big in terms of what's been going on with labor. So maybe let's start with Ontario, the most populous province in the in the nation. Well, the the market in Ontario remains very very tight, and what we saw this past year uh, was that the demand for labor had increased dramatically, and the labor force was struggling to keep up with it. Um, but we saw that pretty much across the country. Almost every every province experienced. Uh, a, a tightening of uh, labor markets, in part because employment was growing much faster than the capacity of the labor force to keep up. And as a result, we saw unemployment rates across the country decline. In Ontario, the, uh, the there's a variety of factors that are driving it over and above housing. It's uh, in significant investments in the economy that are leading to um, very tight labor markets and pretty much in every region of the province, be it uh, in, in Northern Ontario for mining, um, a lot of institutional work in eastern Ontario, uh, in uh, the South West, it's uh, ongoing work on the Gordie Howe Bridge, as well as a number of major investments that uh, were announced after, frankly, um, our analysis that had been completed that will get factored into next year's analysis, such as the Volkswagen plant uh, mm-hmm. in Stellantis that will uh, only add to those demands for labor uh, moving forward. Uh, and a number of public transit and uh, institutional projects that are going on in and around the greater Toronto area that are um, all combining to create very tight labor markets in the province. And what about Quebec? They've got a lot of infrastructure stuff on the go as well. In Quebec, a lot of it is, uh, again, public transit um, and uh, a lot of demand, again, for Uh, labor uh, on the housing side, and Quebec has certainly seen a significant increase in housing construction in the last couple of years, although, again, like other other provinces, it will be impacted by uh, interest rates, Um, and we do see that coming down a little bit from essentially the, the highs that were achieved in the last couple of years. And moving to British Columbia, my home province, so that's why I'm interested. Uh, what's what's going on in British Columbia that's a same and different from what's happening in the middle of the country? Well, in British Columbia, what we're seeing is on the non-residential side that there are a number of major projects that have been really driving employment for the last couple of years that are 
now on the tail end of construction and they will be coming to an end uh, over the next three years. So that will begin to moderate uh, demand on the employment side. Um, but at the same time, we have a number of additional projects that are just getting started. So uh, by and large, we're not seeing a lot of significant changes. In fact, the, uh, the overall demand for labor is going to increase throughout the forecast. Um, and on the residential side, we're seeing, again, the same, same factors that are really impacting uh, our residential construction in other provinces. They're doing the same in British Columbia. The, the key thing to remember, of course, is that um, vacancy rates right now, rental vacancy rates uh, in many urban centers are incredibly mm -hmm. low. And the demand for housing is really strong. Um, why we're seeing a bit of a, a downturn this year is really uh, consumer expectations. And as they adjust to the higher interest rates, um, we anticipate seeing a, a strong bounce back uh, in terms of demand for uh, residential housing. It's not that the demand has disappeared. It's just when you see interest rates increase as dramatically as they did in 2022, that uh, caused many individuals to take a bit of a pause in terms of uh, purchasing homes. Um, but we, uh, as their expectations, again, adjust to more stable interest rates, um, that demand is going to pick up again. And we, we anticipate starting to see that as of 2024. Uh, in terms of Alberta and maybe Saskatchewan as well, um, I know a, a few years ago, the economy was not doing great in Alberta. It's doing better now. But how is, is that being reflected in, in the labor picture? Uh, we certainly see that that is being reflected in the labor picture. Um, it, again, Alberta and Saskatchewan were not immune from the same factors that impacted other provinces. Demand has, employment demand has been growing um, far more quickly than the capacity of the labor force to keep up. And as a result, that too dropped um, unemployment rates in both of those provinces. We do see a, a strong inventory of projects um, in uh, Alberta. Uh, both on the uh, heavy industrial side, uh, also on the industrial side, as well as some on the public transit side that will be essentially maintaining uh, demand for construction labor throughout the forecast period. Mm -hmm. uh, and just to move to the Atlantic provinces, which are traditionally the quote unquote have not provinces, that doesn't seem to be the case given these, these reports. What we've been seeing um, in Atlantic Canada, primarily being driven by Nova Scotia, has been strong demand on the institutional side, again, related primarily to uh, uh, hospital projects. Um, but we're also seeing industrial growth. And we've also been seeing, particularly in the Halifax area, strong demand for housing. And that has really been driving uh, labor force growth in the province. Um, New Brunswick, uh, PEI, PEI, um, it's primarily been the story of uh, increased immigration over the past few years that has really been driving demands for uh, residential, um, residential construction in the province, as well as a number of uh, projects that um, on the non-residential side related to, there's one major project going on right now with wind farms, but um, we also, uh, there's another one waiting in the wings that will also uh, help sustain employment. Um, and in Newfoundland and Labrador, it's been uh, a rebound again in uh, the oil sector, uh, West White Rose, and uh, a slight rebound in uh, residential um, housing demand, which uh, led to, again, a spike in uh, demand for employment this past year, um, which frankly, again, we were seeing throughout the region and uh, across the country. Now, uh, this all sounds like pretty good news, but I'm a reporter, so I would not be I would be remiss if I didn't ask if there's any possible bad news on the horizon. So what black clouds could we see? 
Well, as I said, there's a number of things that we haven't built into this outlook. Uh, obviously, any change, significant change in the economy would have an impact on, on our outlook. Um, but there are a number of factors uh, that we haven't built into this, one being the doubling of uh, new home construction across the country over the next 10 years, the other being the electrification of the economy and what that will mean in terms of uh, significant investments that need to be made both on the residential side but also on the commercial and institutional side uh, to try and not only improve energy efficiency of the existing of existing buildings but also in um, looking at what the impact of fuel switching might actually mean uh, for the industry so Again, no one foresaw COVID-19. No one also mm -hmm. foresaw a war in Ukraine. Uh, there, these things are always. Uh, the, there's always a number of things that can't be, uh, that can't be entertained at the time when we are putting together our forecasts. Mm -hmm. But based on the conditions that we're seeing right now, we're not really seeing any significant downturns. Okay, and by the time this is out, um, your reports will all be out across the country. Uh, so where should people go to read these in detail? Uh, they can come to the BuildForce website. They're all present on the uh, BuildForce website and downloadable from there. Okay, great. Thanks for joining us today, Bill. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thanks.